Hello and welcome to this short video looking at the science of protection. In this film we are going to look at the science behind some of the methods used to test the chemical protective properties of protective coveralls. The primary purpose of a protective coverall is to protect the wearer's body. However, 3M recognised that different jobs require different levels of protection. This is why the range of 3M protective coveralls is diverse and designed to provide options for your application and purpose. In terms of personal protective equipment, body protection normally refers to protecting the skin from the harmful effects of chemicals, either liquids or solids. This film focuses on protection from liquid chemicals. First we will look at the three types of coverall generally available for protection against different levels of liquid chemical hazards. Of the six types of chemical protective clothing, three are specific to liquid chemicals and are referred to as type 6, type 4, and type 3. In each case the fabric is tested for various physical properties and chemical properties. The full suits are also subjected to different tests depending on the type of protection they are intended to offer. Type 6 chemical protective clothing is intended to provide limited protective performance against light splashes of liquid chemicals. Type 6 coveralls are tested in a number of ways including undergoing a limited liquid spray test. Type 4 clothing intends to provide a higher level of protection than Type 6 by having spray-tight fabric and seams. Type 4 coveralls are subjected to similar tests to Type 6, but in the full suit tests, a larger volume of liquid is sprayed onto them. Type 3 clothing is intended to provide an even higher level of protection than Type 4 by having liquid-tight connections between different parts of the clothing. In the Type 3 full suit tests, a powerful jet of liquid is sprayed at several points of the coverall to test for leakage. The full suit tests use a water-based liquid to assess the overall performance of the fabric and the construction of the finished coverall. These tests look for any inward leakage either through the fabric or through the seams or zipper. However, the coverall is also subjected to more specific chemical tests depending on the type of protection it is intended to offer. These tests are known as permeation, penetration and repellency. The fabric of all coveralls is tested for penetration and repellency, but in addition, the fabrics and seams of type 3 and type 4 coveralls are tested for permeation. Penetration is a test to see whether a particular chemical will go through the fabric. Repellency is a test to see whether the chemical being tested stays on the fabric or rolls off. Together, the penetration and repellency tests are often known as a gutter test, because of the equipment that is used. The test method is described in EN ISO 6530. Penetration and repellency are normally carried out at the same time. In this test, the fabric being tested is weighed and placed in a semicircular gutter at an angle of 45 degrees on top of an absorbent piece of fabric, which is itself placed on top of a piece of film. A beaker for collecting any chemical repelled off the fabric is weighed and placed at the end of the gutter. 10 cubic centimetres of the challenge chemical is then delivered onto the fabric from a height of 100 millimetres within 10 seconds using a syringe. After 60 seconds, the levels of any penetration and repellency are measured. Penetration is measured by deducting the weight of the absorbent fabric and film after the test from their original weight. The result will be zero if there has been no penetration. Repellency is measured by deducting the weight of the empty beaker at the start of the test from the weight of the beaker at the end of the test. Ideally, this will be the weight of the challenge chemical, i.e. it has all been repelled off the fabric into the beaker. Typically, chemicals will be tested from families of chemicals to give an indication of the protective properties of a fabric. So, for example, sulfuric acid, 30%, may be selected to give an indication of how the fabric protects against acids sodium hydroxide 10% as an alkaline chemical, oxylene as a solvent, and butanol as an alcohol. However, when selecting a chemical protective coverall, a full risk analysis should always be carried out to ensure the suitability of the product for protection against the hazard in question, including the specific chemicals the wearer may be exposed to. Results are normally given in terms of classes based on the percentages of penetration and repellency. The higher the class number, the better the performance. The classification system in EN 14325, the European standard which sets out the test methods and performance classification of chemical protective clothing, 
has three classes for penetration and three for repellency. Permeation is the process by which a chemical moves through a material on a molecular level. This is different to penetration, which could be described as the process by which a chemical moves through a material on a non-molecular level. To explain it more simply, permeation of a chemical through a fabric cannot normally be seen, whereas penetration through a fabric may be visible to the naked eye. Permeation testing is required for all type 3 or type 4 coveralls because of the greater risk of being exposed to harmful chemicals, either in a larger volume than a type 6 splash or for a longer time period. This test can take up to eight hours, depending on whether there is any permeation, and may therefore be more suited to situations where a coverall is not replaced at the first sign of contamination. Usually, both the fabric and seams are tested for permeation. This is why the seams on a type 3 or type 4 coverall are normally covered with a special, special chemical resistant tape. If the seams were not taped, it is most probable that any chemical would leak straight through, irrespective of how resistant the fabric may be to permeation. The test method for permeation is described in EN ISO 6529. A sample of fabric is clamped between two permeation cells, normally made of glass. The challenge chemical is added to one of these cells, such that it is in contact with the outermost face of the fabric, that is, the side of the fabric that is at risk of being splashed or sprayed. On the other side of the fabric, the inner side, is a cell which contains a collection medium. Throughout the test, the side with the collection medium is analysed to detect any permeation. The test is ended when the rate of permeation or breakthrough is detected at a certain level. This level is normally either when permeation is at a rate of 1 microgram per square centimetre per minute or 0.1 micrograms per square centimetre per minute. Results for permeation are normally given in terms of classes based on the time taken for the rate of chemical breakthrough to occur, commonly known as breakthrough time, or BT for short. Again, the higher the class number, the better the performance. In Europe, this is measured at a rate of 1 microgram per square centimetre per minute, and according to EN 14325, there are six classes. Although it is essential to perform a permeation test of a chemical that a wearer might be exposed to in order to ensure the right coverall for the application is selected, there are limitations to the permeation test. Many of these limitations apply to most of the tests carried out on chemical protective clothing and include a limited number of samples are tested. Testing is based on lab conditions which may not necessarily reflect work conditions. Permeation rates increase with temperature. Fabric may show variation. Permeation testing does not assess degradation. And breakthrough times are not safe wear times. 3M has tested our fabrics against a large bank of chemicals. The results can be found either on our technical data sheets or by contacting your local 3M application engineer. You can also visit the 3M chemical test library. If data is not available for a particular chemical, this could be arranged. Please speak with your local 3M representative. To find out more about the chemical protective properties of the fabrics used in our range or which 3M protective apparel solution best meets your needs, visit www.3m.com forward slash PPE safety solutions or speak with your local 3M representative.